President Julius Nyerere of Tanzania. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip are there to greet him, as well as Prince Charles, Princess Anne, and other members of the family. It's a right royal welcome for this most unpretentious and modest of heads of state. This is President Nyerere's first state visit to Britain, although he's been to Britain privately on previous occasions. The state visit will last four days. Outside the station, the Guard of Honour is mounted by a detachment of the Scots Guards. Before the state drive to Buckingham Palace, there's the formality of inspecting the guard. Now it's time for the people of London to welcome the President as he makes the traditional journey in horse-drawn carriage to Buckingham Palace with the Queen. State drives are occasions for the Queen to present her guests to the people. Tanzanian nationals join in greeting their president. Today, it seems that almost the whole of London has turned up. After the state visit, President Nyerere plans to go on to the Netherlands and Belgium, where he'll visit the headquarters of the European Economic Community in Brussels. Tanganyika became independent and a member of the Commonwealth in 1961. In 1964, she was joined by Zanzibar to become the United Republic of Tanzania. Since then, the country has been guided by this most influential of African leaders, described by the former President Giri of India as held in respect wherever men rate enlightened principles above convenient expediency. and Tanzania have historic ties of friendship, and both are members of the Commonwealth, which has the Queen at its head. This group of nations brings together a population of around 900 million, with different religious and cultural backgrounds, in the cause of common good. At the Royal Banquet, held later at Buckingham Palace, President Nyerere speaks of these times. He says, We rub shoulders in matters of trade, of finance, of politics, and of course through our common membership of the Commonwealth, and our joint desire to develop this institution so that it can make a positive contribution to world peace and justice. In her speech, the Queen praises the President's work in his country to create a society in which the barriers of inequality are being minimized. The president also visits the ancient university town of Oxford. Established in the 12th century, the university now receives students from all over the world. President Nyerere himself spent some of his student days at a British university in Edinburgh, where he is said to have finalized his own unique political philosophy, a philosophy that combines ideas of socialism, Africanism, and human dignity. At the Sheldonian Theatre, the President addresses members of the University on a subject close to his heart, some aspects of liberation in Southern Africa. Mr. Vice-Chancellor and friends, I have uh, talked 
on the American continent, in Asia, and Australia, and in very many countries in Europe, about different aspects of the struggle against racialism and colonialism in Africa. I've been doing so since five days after the independence of Tanganyika, when I first addressed the United Nations as the Prime Minister of a free country. And I shall be speaking on this subject today again. For Oxford University and its graduates are not unimportant in the development of attitudes. And Britain has more influence in the world than a small, weak, and young country like Tanzania. There is an attentive audience, including the British High Commissioner in Tanzania. All that I have been trying to do is to explain the situation as we see it in Tanzania and to indicate the manner in which we shall support the struggle for human dignity in that area of our continent and those three countries. Thank you very much. President Nyerere takes advantage of his stay in Oxford to visit the Commonwealth Forestry Institute, which is concerned with both education and research in forestry. He's particularly keen to see the work of this organization because of the emphasis Tanzania is placing on agricultural development. Later, there's also an opportunity for him to visit the headquarters of one of Britain's largest aid agencies, Oxfam, and to speak to some of the helpers. Many of these people give their time to help the world's less fortunate. Next stop, number 10 Downing Street in London, which is the residence of the British Prime Minister, Mr. Harold Wilson. The two men are colleagues of long standing. Wilson is joined by Mrs. Wilson, Mr. James Callaghan, the British Foreign Secretary, and other dignitaries. Another glittering occasion in honour of the President, a Lord Mayor's Banquet at the Guildhall in the City of London. It gives the President a chance to meet and address the business and finance community of the city. My Lord Mayor, your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. He then has this to say. The City of London has considerable resources of skill and finance which could be invaluable for our development. There's an absorbed audience as he says. I can see every reason for future cooperation between us. We in Tanzania cannot sensibly isolate ourselves from financial centers of the world like the city of London. He then continues. This means that I can give you two quite definite assurances. The president goes on to say. The first assurance is that we shall always want to do business with you. We shall want to borrow, and we shall want to buy. And the president receives a grand ovation from one of the world's great business communities. St. James's Palace in London, once a royal residence. Representatives of foreign powers are still accredited to the Court of St. James. It is there that President Ureri receives ambassadors and high commissioners of Commonwealth countries. The High Commissioner of Kenya. Then a representative from the Pacific. Ambassador of Saudi Arabia.
The state visit is now over, but at Claridge's Hotel, there's a meeting of the Britain Tanzania Society. President Ureri welcomes members, many of whom are former British residents of Tanzania, who retain an interest in the development of their former home. Other members of the Tanzanian government are also present. Finally, the Mwalimu meets some of the 1,000 Tanzanian students who are studying in Britain and is presented with a token gift. It's a suitably informal end to a visit to Britain by one of Africa's most respected leaders, Julius Nyerere.